Chapter 5 of STM4 introduces the idea that the standard deviation, the average distance from the mean, can be used as a ruler, and how this is particularly helpful for the normal model. This is introduced in terms of an example from uh, to compare uh, performance of athletic um, outcomes of the Olympics, and they start with a stem and leaf plot to kind of be comparing these, and the idea of standardizing with z-scores or standard scores, and this formula where we subtract off the mean and divide by the standard deviation. Um, some examples of this that you're encouraged to be working through. Um, here's a table where those are put together. Um, and you can go ahead and be combining these in some fashion. As always, you should be doing the just checking to kind of make sure that you get the right answer. These are the, uh, provided at the back of the book. This idea of shifting and scaling is a general general one, we can be bringing things and doing other shifts in, in other various ways. That's what 5.2 talks about, and this idea of rescaling and some additional examples. Um, the comparison and linkage here with z-scores can be very helpful, which really leads up to the idea of normal models. And normal models, or Gaussian models, um, are appropriate for distributions whose shapes are, are unimodal, roughly symmetric, uh, with 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 good tails um, that that drop off pretty quickly, this idea this is probably the one of the most important pictures in the book, the idea that the um, empirical rule or the 68 95 99 7 rule that about two thirds of the observations are within one standard deviation of the mean of a normal model, within two you have 95 percent and almost all are 99.7 percent. So much of this continuing parts of the chapter. Um, We'll again stress the idea of always draw a picture. It's going to be very helpful. Um, we'll talk about the XP norm function that lets us do that. It talks about ways to be um, kind of demonstrating and doing calculations under the normal model and finding normal percentiles. It used to be your parents would have to go ahead and use a table in the back of the book to look these things up. That's not how you're going to be doing it. It's not how people use. Uh, these methods in practice. Uh, I'll show about how you use R and other technology to be able to do that, which makes all of these things dramatically clearer, as we'll get to in about a minute. So we have this idea of working backwards from the z-scores um, to get uh, percentiles and percentiles to z-scores. Um, there's an inverse function for that that we'll be seeing. Um, again, please be sure to kind of work through these examples if this is not a review for you. Um, and um, we close with the idea of assessing normality and these idea of norm normal probabilities or QQ plots um, that if the line is particularly straight we have something that looks pretty pretty normal if it's not if it deviates from a straight line that indicates it's going to be not as normal so as always what can go wrong we have to be make sure we have the normal ne nearly normal condition satisfied before we proceed with things um, there are some other concerns and really the ideas of the learning objectives in this chapter and some of those key terms. So as always, kind of be working through those as you do the reading. This is a place where things have gotten much simpler, as I said, because of the advent of, of better technologies. So we can read in the data for the Olympics, and we can use something called the XP norm function. Here, this is a fairly complicated one because we have lots of different percentiles we're calculating. Normally, we might have just have one of those, but we also specify the mean and standard deviation of the distribution, and it will go ahead and give us this kind of picture where, again, we see 68% within one, about 95% within two, which may be simpler to see on this second. So I would encourage you to go ahead and just run these commands and verify them, make sure those are, those are working to your satisfaction. If we have just a single value, that's going to be the most common. So we can replicate the example in the step-by-step -step on page 122 and calculate here the probability that the distribution is, the value taken from the distribution is less than or equal to 600. Working backwards, XP norm has a, an inverse function. It's called Q norm. Q norm will work backwards and find the inverse. So whatever XP norm returns, that's what is given as an argument to Q norm to generate the same percentile or the same value that we had. So here it will go ahead and return that value 680. This, for whatever reason, often confuses people. So I would encourage you to, to work through this to make sure you feel comfortable with the back and forth with that. 
Normal probability plots can be generated in Lattice using the QQMath function, and here we see the miles per gallon data uh, for the Nissans. Chapter 5 in SDM4, pretty straightforward way of using the standard deviation as a ruler.